Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I feel esteemed. <laughs> um, so you're all here for the light relief because uh, I must admit I'm not an academic. Um, I'm a CEO, so there'll be nothing rigorous. There'll be nothing rigorous about this presentation whatsoever. Um, I'm here to present uh, and talk to you about a campaign that we uh, ran last year at the Victorian Responsible Gambling Foundation. Um, just to give you a sense of uh, who the Victorian Responsible Found uh, Gambling Foundation is, we're, we're somewhat of a hybrid, if you like, of some of the organisations you have here. In fact, some people call us a mongrel. Um, so we do some of the things that the Ministry uh, of Health does here. So we actually fund the agencies that deliver the counselling and support services. Um, we do some of the things that the Problem Gambling Foundation does, although probably a little bit more subtly than the Problem Gambling Foundation. Uh, there's laws in Australia against dropping pokies out of helicopters, <laughs> so I don't know how you get away with it here. Fair dinkum. Um, and, and we do the research in Victoria, and we also take on the responsibility of all the public campaigns, so uh, similar to the... Uh, HBA that does here. So we're kind of a bitzer, if you like, pulled together. We're only a new foundation. We're 18 months old. Uh, we, we're an independent statutory authority, uh, which means we're really confused as to what our identity is. We're fully funded by government. Uh, we have an act, uh, and we try and, and you know, work towards, towards that act. Um, so I started in the role at, at the inception. I'm the first CEO. I've been there about 18 months. And we were presented with a real challenge in that we, we, this was our first campaign that this new foundation uh, ran. So we really wanted to make an impression. Um, and, and when we looked at you know, the environment and the landscape we were in, um, you know, in, in Australia, last year alone, there were 20,000 free-to-air ads, sorry, 20,000 20, industry ads on free-to-air television. So that's, what, 70 a day or something. It was just going nuts. Um, and so our challenge was, how do we get attention uh, in this space? H how do we get attention from an audience that 98% don't really have a problem with gambling um, and 2% may have a problem with gambling but don't want to know about it or don't want to be told they have a problem with gambling? So, so we had a real challenge. And, and when we engaged some creative agencies to kind of take us through what they could do for us, you know, it was really underwhelming, some of the creative concepts we got, because they were just the same, you know, vanilla, someone tragic, lost their house, gambling, and saying, oh, I need help, and here's where you go to help. And we, we really wanted to do something different, and we came across an agency uh, that gave us just an idea and then along with my team, this idea developed into what we think is one of the most innovative campaigns that we've ever seen, and we're very proud of it. So today I'm going to take you through it, uh, what we did, and give you a kind of glimpse of it. Um, the campaign was really focused. The underlying objective was we, we needed people to access our services. So, you know, we, we have the same problems as you. Less than 10% of problem gamblers get help. Uh, and, and, you know, there are all sorts of reasons for that. So how do we convince people with gambling problems to access support services? Um, but we also wanted to do a couple of other things. We wanted to break down the stigma associated with gambling. And, and again, it's, it's a huge problem here. It's a huge problem in Australia. And we also wanted to create community awareness uh, about gambling and people with gambling problems. Um, so, so when we thought of the various ways of doing this, we thought, well, one of the things you don't see on television very often, and, and the people who you hear less from, are actual people with gambling problems. Um, and so if you think about the, the most powerful session yesterday, and no offence to the speakers, was the consumer session. Um, you know, we were all touched and it was all 
um, a really powerful session because we got to hear from the people who have the gambling problems. It wasn't the experts talking about gambling problems. It wasn't, you know, the CEOs talking about the gambling problems. It was the people who had the gambling problems that we heard from, and that was powerful. Um, we used the same concept. So our, our approach to this campaign was, well, why don't we put a voice, why don't we put a face to, to the issue and, and break down some of the misperceptions about people with gambling problems. They don't have three heads. You know, they, they're not evil. Um, they're not all unemployed and on drugs. You know, it, so we really wanted to break down some of those uh, misperceptions. So the way we ran this campaign, we, we, we were able to engage four heroes, we call them, because they were heroes, really brave individuals who agreed to uh, be the face of this campaign. Um, we actually had a lot of applications. We had a lot of people put their hand up to be part of it. Um, and partly the reason was that they wanted to give something back, um, as well as try and tackle their own uh, issues. Um, as you can see, we tried to get a, a broad variety of demographics. And each one of these people were at different stages or severity, if you like, um, including uh, Daniel Ward, who's actually an ex-AFL footballer. So, and he was two years gamble free, but he still thought about it every day, so we thought this is going to be excellent. Um, so the way we went about it was that we gave these people um, 100 days to take control of their gambling, and we put a camera in their house, and we asked them to just record that 100-day journey. Whenever they wanted, uh, just complete a diary, talk about their challenges, their highs, their lows, and then what we would do every week, uh, we would grab the, 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 the film, we would edit it and put four or five minutes on the web so people could follow their journey. And they did this for 100 days. And then we took some of that and uh, launched the first out of the campaign, which I'll show you. Hi, my name's Anna, and this is day one of my 100 day gambling diary. It's going to be an interesting journey. It's going to be tough. I'm only one year before I can make it out the same parts. There's a lot of apprehension and anxiety about the opening. I'm pretty anxious, pretty nervous. I guess that's only natural. I'm not happy with where it's going. So the ad pointed to a website, uh, Fight For You. So what we did, we created um, a, a website that enabled all uh, people who wanted to, to engage, not just to watch these four heroes, but actually to take part in the challenge themselves. So what we actually did is we created a service where people could sign up, set their own goals, uh, and that could be either stop gambling, reduce gambling, reduce the amount of time you go to a gambling venue or, or you bet online. Um, we would send them inspirational messages once they signed up. You know, keep going, you're doing well. Um, we would send them tips. So we had a ho whole lot of online self-help type uh, services that we would send them. Um, they could record their own diary. Importantly, we also gave them access to other help if they wanted to, or they could just do the 100-day challenge themselves. Um, and we used a variety of counselling options. The thing that really engaged a lot of people was that we asked them to sign up a friend or loved one or family member onto this challenge. And what would happen is these people would receive an email um, to, see, uh, to tell them how their friend was going. So whenever you logged in, you had to rate your mood. So we had a mood rating scale. You would rate your mood. If your mood was rated low, your friend would get an email saying, hey, you better call Serge, he's not doing too well today. And they would get a, you know, support from their friends. So it was a kind of a really you know, all round service that we were trying to create. Here's some other background that the agency put together. They entered a competition uh, with this campaign. Australia has a gambling problem. Gambling ruins thousands of lives, but few people talk about it. And while access to gambling is getting easier, access to treatment is still low. So. We didn't just create an awareness campaign. We went beyond advertising and created a treatment service. Here's how it worked. We gave gamblers 100 days. 
we ask them to sign up for our challenge, set goals, check in, recruit supporters and record their experiences through a private online video diary. We monitor their progress daily. If they are feeling low, their supporters were prompted to make contact. If they needed help immediately, we offered it. To promote the treatment service, we set up cameras in the homes of four brave, real people with gambling issues. For 100 days, they recorded their diary experiences for the world to see. When I'm on holiday, I should be happy, yeah. yeah. I'm not more nervous. Right now, I really feel like going to the pub, getting smashed and just playing the pokies, but I'm not going to go, ah. And as the world watched, our audience became a community who supported each other. It's great to hear a real person who knows the game as well as anyone telling the world exactly how it is. Don't lose hope. Watching your story has inspired me. This is a whole new treatment service that we've developed. This is a whole new way that people with gambling problems can get help. It's taking away generations of, of, of social constructs around um, what's normal and what's not normal. We surveyed 200 problem gamblers and found in 100 days, 56% were aware of the campaign. In 100 days, 16% signed up. In 100 days, 25% shared the campaign. In 100 days, we changed the odds for Australia's problem gamblers. After 100 days, and mate, it's just been all positive. Uh, having it a bet, I'm happy I actually have savings now. Um. In case you're wondering, I do have other shirts. It was just a coincidence, <laughs> <laughs> was just a coincidence that uh, <laughs> I didn't really plan that one very well, did I? Um, so in terms of results, we've had nearly 300,000 visits to the website, which is just phenomenal. Um, of those, uh, 217,000 were unique visitors. Now, there's an estimated 30,000 problem gamblers in Victoria. Uh, so so we, we really did engage, I think, a, a much bigger audience than just the people who may have had uh, problems with counselling, uh, gambling. So we're really excited about that. Um, over 3,000 people signed up to actually do the challenge. And when we were putting this together, we, we kind of thought, gee, what's going to be our target? And it's really hard to put a number on this because uh, it's never been done and you really don't know how you're going to engage. What we do know is that if there are 30,000 uh, potential you know, people with gambling problems, uh, less than 10% seek help. So we've probably got a target group of around 3,000. Would we get a quarter of those was kind of our thinking. You know, would we get a few hundred people signing up? The fact we've got over 3,000 for us was just phenomenal because it, it really showed that, that there was a soft entry type of way that people can get help. Uh, we've still got 2,500 who are active. And active means varying degrees. For some people, they'll log in every day, um, you know, or once a week. For others, they may not log in much at all um, and, and just continue to, to receive the odd messages here and there. In terms of uh, awareness, so we ran another survey uh, three months after what you saw in the video. Um, another 206 people with gambling problems. Uh, only 14% said that it wasn't relevant to them. Uh, half remembered the campaign, which is good, so there was good recall. 70% had some awareness, uh, and 81% of relapse problem gamblers, for some reason, had a greater awareness. In terms of impact on behaviour, um, out of those independently surveyed, 206, 18% had already taken up the challenge. 23% um, had told others about it. 41% considered signing up, and 77% thought about reducing or stopping as, as, a, as a, a response to the ad. So, yeah, pretty good results overall, but this was the kicker. We, we had 9,000 inquiries to the rest of our services. So, so we offer online chat forums, on, online counselling, telephone, self-help. Um, overall, this, this was a great feeder to, to all our other uh, types of, of services that we offer. So, we were really, really excited about this because what, what it showed us is that if we, if we allow people with gambling problems to, to enter in their own way, in a way that they feel safe, that's anonymous, non-threatening, and it could be just I look at a web portal and I might just put my name down and it might be Mickey Mouse as a name so no one knows who you are, uh, but you know, it kind of encourages them maybe, well maybe I could call somebody just to get a bit more help. 
And we, you know, we, we kind of have a hunch that's, that's what's been happening, although it's really hard to get that from the data. Um, in terms of the de demographics, no surprises, mostly male. We did get 10% over 55, which was good. It means that it's not all Gen Y who are using uh, the internet. Um, this was really, this is the stuff that you know, we, we think is really valuable. We, we focused the campaign on fight for the real you because you know, for those of you who work in treatment services, people will tell you I've changed. I'm no longer the same person. Um, you know, I've lost who I was, all that. So the campaign was centred about who is the real you and let's try and get you back. Um, and so, you know, they, they would put down their own personal goals and some of this stuff was really heart rendering. It really was. And, and uh, just beautiful message. And we've got hundreds of this stuff, uh, which was um, a delight to, to, to read and get real insights into their situation. Uh, some of the goals, you know, when I hear black caviar, I want to think of dinner, not horse racing. Um, you know, I want to get my life back on track, stop gambling immediately, you know, just real definite goals. Um, and, and this is kind of some of the supportive messages that they were putting online for our hero. Um, and really personal and inspirational stuff. And, and uh, it really encouraged our four heroes, uh, or really gave them a sense that they were doing something really valuable, which were really, uh, was really important to us. Um, we, we did uh, some feedback. We, we asked those who had um, participated in the challenge just to give us a little bit of feedback uh, in the interim. This is not complete as yet. 75% uh, felt that it, it helped them achieve their goal. 86% um, said they would recommend the challenge to a, a family member or friend. And 88% said they would participate again. And there was no limit to how many times you can do the 100 day challenge. And in fact, the 100 day challenge has now become a permanent service for us. It's, it's not, not just a campaign, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's an actually new way of getting help, which uh, is what we want to create in the first place. Um, these are just some, some anecdotal um, comments from the people we surveyed uh, who, who gave the feedback. So really, really touching stuff. We're, we're really delighted at, at that sort of thing. Um, in terms of, you know, we try to work out well, what, what worked about it. And, and you know, and we, we, we kind of looked at some frameworks and we found one framework from Francis and, and others around advertising and communication. And, and I think the thing that we all really wanted to achieve, we, we didn't just want to run an ad. That's what we've done in the past. In the past, we, we ran an advertising campaign. Um, people remembered it a little bit. It may or may not have changed their behavior. They might have picked up the phone, maybe not. Um, but it was essentially a push out ad that was one way. What we wanted to do is create a communication process where we talked, we listened back, and we provided solutions. Uh, we gave the audience something to do and something to engage in. And, and I think that's what was unique about this campaign as opposed to some of the other campaigns that we've run uh, in the past. Um, and we also wanted to engage secondary audiences. It, it wasn't just about the individuals who had gambling problems. We wanted to engage their friends, their partners, the community, all those other audiences, which, again, given you know there were over 200,000 unique visitors, uh, we feel we, we achieved that. Um, some of the other elements, it, it was about choice and, and giving people with gambling problems choice of how they deal with it, not telling them you need to come to face-to-face -face sessions and bear your soul for the next two years. It's do it your own way, and here's a number of different ways that you can do it. Um, the power of re real people, to us, this was, you know, the constant feedback uh, we got about the campaign was, you know, you use real people, and that was the strongest message uh, for everyone. And it, it really did. Even people who were never aware of the issues around problem gambling, we, you know, we, we got a lot of feedback from the general community saying, wow, you know, it's really changed my perception about gamblers. You, you, you know, this is not just, you know, a, a, a fringe group. This is part of our community. Um, there was flexibility. Uh, it, it was a modern approach. I mean, uh, who, who's not guilty of watching reality TV? Come on. You're all hooked on some. Oh, you are so, Razor. I know you are. You're all hooked on some reality TV here as well, aren't you? Surely. Australia just gone nuts. I can't understand it. But it, uh, it says something about what we want to watch. We want to watch reality. We want to get engaged. We want to participate. We want to follow. We want online, you know, the, the whole digital native thing 
was really important aspect for us. So we created an online community that could follow each other and, and similar to some of the concepts we're seeing now. Um, and we offered support by engaging significant others. We actually based the, the structure around some of these get fit programs, you know, the Michelle Bridges go online, put your, your goal weight in and then you get all these messages of support. We, we based it on a, a similar concept. So we put structure around how they got help. Um, and just a couple of weeks ago, we launched the final ad, which was a 12 month follow up uh, to, to the campaign that we ran in March. Um, the ads were running last week for a couple of weeks. Um, and it really is just to give people how are our heroes gone and, and what's happened to them. And I'm really proud to say they've all done extraordinarily well. Um, this particular individual, I'll... Gambling's a really big problem for me. While I was gambling, my self-esteem was at its lowest. <laughs> I've been using Gambler's Help Services. Uh, I've been seeing a counsellor. They're there to guide you in the right direction. Since my last bet, it's been around 325 days. And I couldn't be prouder. Who's choking up? Authorised by the Victorian Beautiful, Hospital isn't it? Gambling Foundation. <laughs> well, we, we've actually employed this guy. He, um, He's, he's now become one of our ambassadors. He's doing so well. I mean, he, he, he was a tradie. Um, you know, he had a bad back. He couldn't work. He, he lost $250,000 in a matter of six years. Uh, just, in, you know, lived at home with his mum, girlfriend about to dump him, and he got onto the campaign. And now his whole life has turned around. He's coming to work with a, you know, in a tie. Uh, he's presenting to kids in schools and... You know, his life has just taken off. So we're really proud of Matt, and uh, we hope to have him for a long time. So, um, look, I, I think, you know, that's all I really have to say. I, I guess for us it was a, a really, really um, special campaign. It was one of those projects that engages you at a far deeper emotional level that, that you ever anticipated. We got to know the four people really closely. Uh, we followed them. They had a whole team of counsellors supporting them. We were advised by counsellors all along the way. Uh, we made sure that everyone had the relative access that they needed, uh, and we still keep in touch with them. So it was, really was a great campaign. Tough one to follow up. Um, so we have since done another campaign, which was more at the educational generating awareness. It's called KidVet. I think Samantha's going to um, show up tomorrow morning. But if you're interested, go to kidvet.com.au. Uh, we've had lots of complaints about this campaign, so it means it's working really well. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Kilda Serge, honestly inspiring. That, that great innovative work that's been yeah. done, and uh, it was a real pleasure. Exciting, and um, yeah, I couldn't take my eyes off it. So oh, good on you, great, great Thank you. So, um, open it up to the floor if we've got a few questions. Mm. <laughs> hey, um, thanks again, Serge. I came to this session with you not really who to expect, but I'm totally inspired by this campaign. Um, I'm really interested just to hear about um, what the guys your messages within the campaign, how you dealt with the um, with the relapse thing. Because I know you uh, previous questions I've asked is around we know that people will relapse yeah. often within the hundred day period, which is yeah. why the period's been set. Yeah. But how did you kind of pick up on that with the messages of the campaign? Um, well we, we don't have we didn't have access to individuals, so yeah. it was totally private and anonymous. Yeah. Um, what we just kept doing is just sending people messages of inspiration. So if someone wasn't meeting their goals, however, or their moods were down, their, their support people would have notification of that. So, you know, it's a tricky thing because you, you can't invade the privacy. So we, we and, and that's why we made it 100 days. I think the danger period is 60 or 70 days, Rosa, of relapse. Yeah, that's the kind of danger period. So we thought, well, let's go 100, um, and, and that way we, we try and get through that. But look, Anna, the, the woman, she relapsed, um, and you know she did it again, and now she's, I think, 150 days gamble-free. She's, again, her life has turned around. So it's a difficult issue, but we tried to cover it through the messaging and the support that we offered. Yeah. Mm. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Just still relating it to my own experience, I think one of the uh, points of difference was the not having to elicit the help yourself. You know, you could drop a little line on the computer, but you didn't have to actually 
pick up the five thousand pound telephone yeah. and ring someone that was yeah. sort of taken out of your hands a bit, which is good. And yeah. the other thing I th that I related to was the uh, bit about um, you're in the loop of something, yeah, something real. You're part of a community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas yeah. Um, you're not sort of out there on your own, sort of um, making that physical effort to get somewhere. You're already you're already in without yeah. having to. Yeah, that, that thing again of it's taken out of your hands a little bit, yeah. and which is prompting you to to carry on. And I think that was a good point of difference. Yeah, and you're right. It's a, it's a safe way of getting help. Mm -hmm. And and if you listen to the chap yesterday, you know that the walking upstairs, the Gamblers Anonymous, was the the toughest walk of his life. Mm -hmm. um, and picking up that you know heavy phone is really really challenging. And that's why. But well, let's get rid of those barriers. And let's let people do it on their own. And it's simple as just sign up to it. And that's all you've got to do for now. Yeah. And then if you feel like it, you can call somebody down the track. If not, it's okay. Yeah. And you know, the research shows that you know, natural recovery is, is, a, is an important part of, of our, our approach and we should be encouraging it. Uh, and that's what kind of this does. It encourages natural recovery. We, we know that some people recover on their own. <laughs> this is just a bit of a support for them to do that. Yeah, that's no, a really good point. Yeah. Um, from a technical perspective, what, um, how difficult was moderating the site and yeah. how much um, spam or abuse or whatever might you have received? Yeah, look, it was difficult to put it all together, but we actually didn't receive, not that I know of. We, we had a moderator on the site, obviously, but all the messaging was overwhelmingly positive. <coughs> you know, we, we really didn't receive, and we were, prepared for it and, and we also have an online chat forum that's part of our service and you know that gets the odd wacko but uh, but uh, but this you know it was overwhelmingly positive See, it, I mean some of the comments that we saw would draw tears you know it was really beautiful stuff so it was look it was a tough thing to put together you know it was you know, I had to get it through premier and cabinet and and that was tough because you, you know, getting through something, you know, and maybe you would know getting through stuff through, you, you, you know, your minister is, what, you real people? <laughs> you know, it was really, really challenging and everyone was, you know, really anxious and, you, you know, sometimes I felt my job was on the line if anything happens. It, uh, but, you know, it all went really well once we launched it. It was um, really positive. Yeah, I'm sorry about since that. We, no, since we rocked on up, you couldn't get it any clearer than what you're providing. <laughs> right. Right here and now, and that's it, and then. Yeah. It'd be really great to see that we, that type of service delivery be consistent yeah. throughout the Oceanic yeah. area. That you can do this. Yeah. We, we hop on your back and... Yeah, yeah. Like I've got a strong back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we might do the same like that because you couldn't... Because that's what I've picked up as a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The target, the secret target of your co-papa is 100 days. 100 days. Love. Just get that goal. And you're right, look, up. sometimes you just got to go with the gut, don't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, you just got to go on something that has face value. And, and uh, uh, Rosa, my research manager here is going to hate me for saying that. <laughs> uh, but sometimes you just got to go on the gut. And, yeah. I think if we, uh, and I know this is not the right conference to say this, but if we're always waiting for the evidence, uh, you know, we, we're never going to do anything, you know, so sometimes it's got to have face validity, and I think, you know, experience will give you enough to, to, to judge something whether it's got face validity or not, and, and that's what we kind of went on. It was a hunch, it was instinct, and we went for it. But look, it's, there, there is research behind it, and, you know, it is... There's rigor behind it. We, we didn't just kind of, you know. Um, so, but look, thanks for your point, and you know, I hope we can collaborate across the Pacific. Yeah, I, um, I was just throwing a quick uh, comment.
comment as well. I think in our, in our changing times, and moving times with technology, um, you know, we always hear friends and family that always want to support. Um, and I think what this, uh, this program has provided is the opportunity to be able to engage uh, with them and let them have that opportunity to provide that support. And, uh, and I know I, I get a little uh, anxious about finding all these comments flying around on Facebook about all these thoughts yeah, and, and yeah. think, oh, but in this context, um, those are the sort of uh, feedback that people need to yeah. keep them uplifted. And um, so it's a real pleasure that it's been woven in to provide some support within the uh, harmful gambling context. So, um, uh, you know, on behalf of, uh, uh, of us here that we're privileged to sit there <laughs> and, uh, and see your presentation, Serge, thank you very much for your time and the effort by all of you. Kia ora,